what is a fun and interesting way to use a hag in Dungeons and Dragons? And I mean, when I say fun and interesting, like hags aren't really the sort of things that you use that are fun for the players characters. I know that somebody's going to talk about dead children at some point or something else. So let's just get that out of the way. Okay. So you know how normally hags, they like eat kids or whatever, so that they can maintain their eternal life. Well, that's the, the very, show. that's the beginning and end of dead kids for me in this one. Okay. So this one like did it too much or whatever. It was too powerful. Uh, and, and now she can't die. And she wants to. She's miserable. She's just like, I just want to die. I'm done here now, please. So, like, she keeps trying to do, like, all these crazy magical things to off herself. Or, like, at least careless enough that as a, as a byproduct, she is offed. Ends up, like, just wiping out, like, whole cities and stuff because of it. And the party has to go and be like, okay, we're here to kill you. And she's just like, yes! <laughs> Please, I want that. I'm on your side. She's just like the patron of the party and helps them find a way to kill her. Yeah, and she's and like on her turn, she's like casting shit on herself, but it like blows out the back of her hand and like fries your pally or whatever. I'm too powerful. William. You would never be able to have a dramatic D and D session with me as the game master. I just don't take anything seriously. I'm always like, how can I make this as dumb as possible? <laughs> Do you really think? I mean, most sessions end up that way, whether you mean them to or not. Yeah. I kind of have two answers. Not neither of these are are my invention, of course. Yeah, in my opinion, there's there's two ways you could use hags. You could uh, take them fully seriously, or uh, according to my notes, hags are for gags. In which case, you're you're mostly just trying to have some fun with it. So, I mean, if you're going for the hags are for gags answer. Uh, I, I think it's pretty hard to beat the the Skyrim hag raven thing where you wake up after a night of drinking and you're married to a hag raven and then you gotta like try and figure all that out I, I think it's pretty hard to beat that as an adventure hook uh, for a funny thing about hags but taking it more seriously uh, honestly one of my favorite D&D &D books that I, I every time I hear about it online everyone's talking about how much they hate this book but I absolutely loved it which was uh, Heroes of Horror, which was for 3.5, I think. And they had this amazing encounter for it. All, all the all the children in a village uh, go missing and you're off like trying to find them and you're wandering through the woods and all that. And uh, one of the places that just seems like a random house that you're passing by, you answer it and uh, it's this little old lady and she's got two kids and you know, you're trying to ask her directions to get through the forest to figure out where you're actually supposed to be going. But then if you look through her window, like if you look through her window while she doesn't know you're coming, uh, you can just see her with her like two brain or like mind controlled kids, uh, like roasting all the others on the fire. <laughs> And it's like, oh my god. <laughs> Either hags are for gags, or hags need to be terrifying child killers. Real creatures of extremes. <laughs> Do you think that um, hags will be the next monster to get the Wizards of the Coast politically correct um, treatment, considering the treatment of children? Well, uh, I just hope that they're a playable race that has child-eating mechanics. Good to know. Okay, so that book will be called what will it? That'll be the um, the guide to everything, or everybody's <laughs> guide to everything. It's gonna um, be um, what's her name? There's a magic card. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce her name. Her name is like 30 letters long. Her name is so long that she doesn't even have a mana cost because the text is too long. It's like asterisk something 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 to call the car. And she's a chef. It's gonna be her. It's gonna be that person's name's guide to eating kids. Baba Yaga's big book of barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stole mine from Scottish folklore with the four one Odrin, uh, where they look like a hag, but it's actually a. Uh, it was a creature that appear. They could appear very old, very young, or a young woman. And that way, where people were expecting a hag, and it's act, it was actually a test where it's the same creature that, but she she would appear like you you have three tests. You know, like you'd have to play with the kid, you'd have to you know like treat the young woman with respect and help her, and help the old woman cross the street. So if everybody's looking for a villain, you can replace you would replace it with something that looks like a hag, but it's not quite a hag. And uh, she was ridiculously powerful. I mean, it was the 
talking about uh, the uh, the ghost. Yeah, these things would like steal you would steal youth from a, a uh, somebody who didn't deserve it, and they would go and find an old man that had you know like wasted his life helping others, and you know give him forty years of youth back. You take away the evil, and it's like this. It was this incredibly complicated you know, in-depth creature. I don't know how you do that mechanically in D&D. You know, I'm stealing from Scottish folklore here, and that was an interesting take rather than just playing uh, Meg Mucklebones from Legend. Played by Robert Picardi from uh, Star Trek. Rewarding people that she thought was worthy. She, what it was is she would take away what from the people she thought wasted, the, you know, their gifts, right. and give it to the people she thought was more deserving of what the other person wasted. It's like if that guy from Saw did something with his genius <laughs> instead of just hurting people. I still want to see the Saw Harry Houdini crossover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once again, my attention turns to Curse of Strahd. People always talk about like, oh, Wizards of the Coast has made 5th edition too like safe and, and like happy-go-lucky. Not all of it. <laughs> Um, uh, if, if yo, Strahd is <laughs> miserable, <laughs> yeah. Um, in the best th there's, way, yeah. There, there's some dark stuff in there, and even in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, like if you want to see some gnarly artwork, Google Rhyme of the Frost Maiden Sea Hag. I, I'm fortunate in that, uh, my wife actually wrote an article and did some videos about hags, so I just took some of her ideas from her research. She pointed out in some lore that there's an original hag, picture like the elven goddess type princess, queen, whatever. Sejalun, Sejalune, I don't know the pronunciation. And basically bad things happen and she turns into a hag and now her offspring and followers become, you know, all that is gross and wicked about nature personified. Because hags really like secrets and trinkets and that sort of stuff, they might be a great monster to use if you want your players to have a moral dilemma and involve trading. Maybe they believe this hag is beyond them in power. I once ran a one shot where I did the whole like hag um, presence having an effect on a nearby village. All of a sudden, like marriages were falling apart and children were hating their parents because just the effect of like a hag coven can do that to people. It's just like that old period peace movie, uh, The Witch. It's spelled like the Vivich, you know, yeah. where like things are just happening. You're like, is there even a witch here or not? And so like that kind of set the stage for a hag of like everyone's going crazy because they're just present. And then maybe uh, a kid or, or some other person that's important to the party trespassed in the hag's territory. And so they're locked up. So they go to see the hag and the hag says, well, I will trade you the boy's life for a, a corrupted soul of a holy man or something like that because hags want to corrupt good people and like harvest their souls and make bank in hell with them basically <laughs> they also might just be interested in interesting trinkets you know so like going back to our discussion of the genie it's like oh you have an interesting ring on your finger there perhaps that would be worth the prisoner's life you know that sort of thing and they start bargaining in rhyme of the frost maiden you meet some hags who know the secret to something you need to do and they ask you to, for one of your memories and so uh my character i actually opted to give up one of my memories you know your core memory given away uh, to the hags and that was a, an interesting thing for me to try to role play also hags their their magic should be weird like they cast spells like the the rest of the characters but they should be throwing out like a beehive that turns into like a cloud kill and stuff like that or a frog that they blow up like a shrek balloon and then it bursts into locusts or something like that or makes or they they like hurry and like plant something like a, a moldy potato in the ground and it bursts up into wall of thorns stuff like that and they should have interesting brews like they they could even have like a book that they've written of like certain brews and potions they make like one that my wife i don't know if she got it somewhere or made it up but one's like brew of the beloved this wretched like alchemist fire type thing when you throw it it does like a cloud that makes everyone charmed by the hag situation where maybe if everyone's charmed by the hag they like sit down and have dinner with her and they love all of her cooking even though it's really weird and um they trade secrets with her and stuff like that or there's a uh, based on that original hag there's brew of sigilune's blessing something that can actually make them become warty and fiend like for a limited time and make them very powerful but when it's over they turn back to their normal form and their constitution is permanently minus two from what it was these like trade-off type things kind of like going back to the genie where there's like a duality to the wish i think hags should have these like brews and items and things that they can do that have a duality to them and i think that is really interesting for the players to find because it's kind of like finding a cursed item where it's like oh there's this good thing about it if you use it right but there's also this downside if you harness even just one of those ideas you can make them far more interesting i really like the idea That's of sick, uh, yeah. hags having like especially 
weird magic compared to other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I think he can really pull out like a whole bunch of like old pagan religious practices. Uh, and you can just really mine that for uh, for ideas like off the top of my head. Like I, I remember in ancient Greece, there was this like fertility rite they used to do where they used to just like go out to cattle and sorry to get gruesome, uh, but then they, they would cut out uh, all the reproductive organs and uh, bury it around or they'd bury it in the ground and like burn it and stuff. And then then like do a big circle ritual thing around it and that's absolutely the kind of like yes. vibe i would get yeah. with like hag magic old school mm -hmm. paganism is metal as <laughs> for real I remember a mystery science <laughs> I... theater where they had the hag and he's like i'll, I'll give you, grant you this wish but first a foot massage yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> I love the idea of hags using magic and it being very like trade this for that kind of thing um, with upside and downside. But also I something I've always found intriguing about hags is that a yes, I think it's definitely on brand to have their magic be extremely weird. It's also on brand that their magic works in ways that we're not used to seeing magic work and that the one of the core things to like the hags mechanics and it's just identity and like folklore is the concept of the coven where it's like if you have a hag it's like oh a hag is powerful and can do all this stuff but if there's like three hags that are joined together around like the coven mother or whatever they can do crazy shit that like your highest level wizards would even struggle to do on their own because they're capable of pooling all of this magic power together something i draw inspiration on a lot for this when it comes to hags and covens there used to be a thing, I'm not sure if it was in 4th edition, but I know this was in 3rd edition, where you had like 10th level spells, which were basically very powerful spells that in some cases could affect like an entire region or a country or even beyond. But you had to cast them, either there was like some ridiculous price to pay, like I can think of specific ones where like you died, like you cast it, but you're killing yourself to do this. Or you needed like a group of accomplished spellcasters and it took like a month or a year to do this thing. One example being like there's a spell that would literally permanently change the climate of an area but you had to have like 20 spell casters who were all at least level seven working on this like eight hours a day for like a year and then after that was over it's like okay we just now live in a tropical zone where it once was winter all the time or whatever right so i i love the idea of covens coming together to do that kind of thing for what what nefarious or otherwise whatever their purposes are and i also think it's very interesting because the concept of a coven implies that like the reason covens are tough is because hags often don't want to work with one another because they're so independently powerful so when they are unified in a purpose it's like oh okay clearly this is something that benefits all of them that sets precedent that if there were multiple covens willing to work on the same thing together they could achieve even crazier stuff but now you're like working outside your network right so i love the idea of kind of like what uh, jordan was alluding to with that concept of like the first hag or the hag mother this being whether they're that being or a new hag that has stepped in some extremely powerful magical entity that is trying to like unite all of the hags within a given region and is going like coven to coven and like negotiating and being like oh what do you want if you give me this Mance i can Raider give you this style. yeah and basically trying to gather up like all the covens in a huge region to come together to cast some crazy spell that is going to like fundamentally change the fabric of reality potentially in that area or the very nature of that area in some way whether good or bad to benefit themselves and ultimately you have all these little side deals going on with all these little covens in some senses they might even be trying to establish like a new world order sort of thing where it's like oh hags are on top now like we had the age of giants we had the age of dragons now it's time for hags to rise up like the dragons are in decline so we're gonna take this moment to seize power and kind of set forth a new age kind of thing and that is like rife ground for you to escalate on like a full 1 to 20 campaign right like you start that campaign with a group of level one or two adventurers and like a local kid went missing and now they're investigating the forest where there's a hag which leads them to investigate this coven which maybe that leads them to investigate like oh this coven was doing this but why were they acting strangely like why were they doing these things that they weren't normally doing like this ha this coven was never kidnapping kids before they were interested in other stuff so why did that suddenly start which then leads you to this just escalates and escalates until they're like oh 
oh, this is really crazy. And like, we need to tell everyone what's going on. Otherwise, the world as we know it might be changing drastically. So yeah, I would I would love to see groups of hags doing more huge shifting kind of magical stuff on like a big scale. Kind of you kind of made me think of the concept of the ball spawn from Baldur's Gate 2, where the, the Lord of Murder before he was like defeated his like cult he just like had lots of offspring and then later they all kind of do this like highlander thing where it's like there can only be one and so they take each other out try to become the new god of murder bubble Baldur, Baldur's gate 2 is a DD computer game one thing i thought of was like now with, with like van richten's guide to ravenloft there's the concept of the hex blood lineage which gives a little bit more a context to all this stuff about like hags that take children and like eat them and then like birth them again and then like put them back in their families horrible stuff when you yeah. like read about hags yeah. and so it'd be super interesting to almost kind of go with like an x-men angle where all these kids start suddenly becoming hex bloods and it's like why have hags been doing this they've like they've like done it here and there in the past but all of a sudden like much of a generation is suddenly being revealed to be hex bloods and parents and children are like at odds because they're like oh my child's a hex blood and like so you can get into some heavy themes as well yeah. as go into those like grandiose stuff of that head hag who's uniting all of them and trying to create more hags so they can collectively have like a super coven and yeah. corrupt all the ley lines and stuff like that but they, you could do some crazy stuff and explore some really deep themes if you're into that i'm just to go all the way back to rahazia where it was uh i don't know if magic jar is still a spell in fifth edition but it, it was is. three hags okay yeah three hags grabbing uh three elf babes and uh deciding that this is going to be our new body and we're going to go do horrible things Ooh, the uh yeah elven princess who's on a twist of fate they you have to rescue the uh fiance rather than her she just appears <laughs> to give you the mission which makes for a really quick adventure if you can convince her he's just not that he's just not worth it <laughs> I uh I love the concept of what you were talking about, Jordan, with the hex bloods. Like I'm just imagining how a kingdom would react to this kind of thing happening. And it's like, oh, okay, like first a few cases crop up, and then suddenly it's becoming like this almost pandemic like thing with like all these kids suddenly being revealed. And I like, you know, there would be an inquisition, you know, there would be a lot of dead kids, very on theme for today. And they'd be going around like testing families and stuff, of like administering yeah. some sort of magical test to see if, if like kids who weren't showing yet like we're actually hex bloods and so on and so forth yeah. you can do some the greatest tag stuff. of all is man <laughs> the greatest tag of all is is a government or a like a church inquisition you know we talk about hags killing kids but people will do it too if the, you know i know we're hag. getting real dark but we said this isn't a four kids stream so the yeah real hag was the friends we made along the way going back to the concept of hags josiah that you're talking about and sort of wider mm -hmm. scope and implications i mean the hags are kind of well no they're not kind of they are like instrumental in the middle of the blood war between the devils and the demons right because they are the, the soul brokers they they trade in souls and really they're manipulating demons and devils in this war to their own ends and if they were going to take over anywhere i think hags would take over the nine hells or at least um avernus the first level and potentially move on to the next levels um over time just because they can they're just using the demons and devils as like little pawns in a chess game those demons and devils have no idea what's going on frankly so all of a sudden the hags because they they create like these souls and those like little soul larvae which like a worm with a, a human head like those are like really crazy things they deal those souls so that they can become devils and fiends in the blood war so all of a sudden hags become the makers of the clone wars from star wars but it's in hell <laughs> there you go that's thank the you. big idea. Thank, You're thank right, you. though. Yeah. We're, just, we're just straight up war profiteers. Like, Yeah. I want to yep. see that version of MTV Cribs. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're um, dealing with hags and we're in a furnace, uh, that's where my mind was going. And for some strange reason, I was thinking war machines, those war vehicles from a furnace, you know, you drive around it's like Mad Max, demon devil, um, demons and um, demon vehicles basically and they run on souls i can see a like a, a fuel station in avernus many of them franchise all owned by hags and so you pull up to fill up your war machine they don't fill up their war machines here with like a coin a soul coin no we we sell the new improved liquid soul fuel who's the attendant the fuel attendant it's a hack I mean, eggs as gas station attendants. I need to see that now. N that's. <laughs> 
I'm sorry. I, I had to I had to present it to you as an idea because for some strange reason it appealed to me so much. It's ludicrous, I know. I, I love, love that. I, no, Hags in But have you seen soul prices lately? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Like when you pull up, are they just like, what do you want? Uncorrupted or like do you have different <laughs> varieties of gas instead of like unleaded? You have like your uncorrupted, uh, I don't know, whatever the equivalent of diesel is. Well, I mean, it could be really, really horrible and they could have not just like evil souls but they might have even been able to um get that that premium you know um paladin pure souls. souls yeah pure yeah. souls you you pure really souls? who's asking yeah. <laughs> it's like nitro you know if you want to go really really fast <laughs> it's the best stuff <laughs> i i think the other thing we need to remember too if you're going to be don't doing anything with hags and dungeons and dragons is that that house of candy yeah you know the story i'm talking about hansel and gretel that's a hag she's there she entices the children and then they wind up eating her house and then she winds up eating them uh, but that's that's a hag for sure and and it's uh it's an easy trope they did it and <laughs> they did it in the curse of strad bone grinder children as pies pastries it's it's gonna it's a happening Green thing um, it's very very tasty and psychedelic mind altering effects too so there's drugs eating yeah. children drugs it's very dark stuff how did curse of strad not wind up with like a great huge sticker across it parental guidance the mature recommended. sticker like what's on the book, like what's on the book of vile darkness yeah does it, not, does it not have uh, that shocks me it has a it has a foreword in it that's heinous. like this book deals with horrible themes such as boom 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 and it's like if that's not cool with you probably don't run this module because it's like central to the plot that's in the book and tiny writing Great okay <laughs> who's ever gonna spot that until it's too late i mean you know you already bought the book i mean <laughs> you, you, it's too late the other one i want to mention disney movie called tangled where we basically have the rapunzel character whose mum is a hag i mean she's getting getting her youth back from from magic right but i mean you can do it in many ways whether whether it's feeding off somebody else or feeding off magic from something. But I mean, essentially, that's a hag, which doesn't look like a horrible, ugly person. It, I mean, essentially, that character looks more like what it would be a sort of a young... The chair or sheer? Cher. 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 That, that, yeah. She kind of a bit like that, that character. And... Um, Cher is a queen. I'm sorry. I just have to come forward and say Cher is a queen. She's a queen. And there's a lot of singing. No, no hard feelings, Cher, if you're watching this, is all. So we're not... You're we're not, not yeah, we're not suggesting that um, Chia is a hag. Really quickly, I just, I love the idea of mixing the Tangled idea with Josiah's like New World Order idea. And it's like all these, all these children of hags have to come together to stop their moms and you can call it Sons of Witches. It'd be so good. <laughs>